Hello and welcome to this presentation. Uh, today I'm going to talk about interpreting salary survey data. I find this to be a challenge for most people when they get uh, salary survey information, either as individuals or as an organization. They find it very difficult to, to interpret this data. What is crucial whenever you get salary survey information, either through a report or your own assessment that you have done in the market, it's always crucial to be able to talk about the sample size. Uh, when the sample size is very small, you can actually make decisions that are misleading based on that sample size. So we would urge you to look at a reasonable sample. We know it's very difficult to get information on salaries, especially in our market. Uh, most people don't want to participate in salary surveys, but you can still try and get this information. Once you get that information, the information must be presented uh, properly. So if you can get seven participants and above, you should be able to do reasonable analysis of the data. Anything below that, uh, it becomes very difficult to make any informed decision based on that particular kind of data. So when you look at this kind of uh, information that I've presented here, you will find that uh, uh, we've got uh, these four positions, Chief Executive Officer, Chief Operations Director, uh, HR Manager, IT Manager, and then you've got uh, uh, your grade, with these grades could be your grading system or they could be a universal grading system. There are tables to cross validate these grading systems if you want to, to know what kind of grading it is, maybe it's Patterson or Hay or other grading systems. What is also crucial to note here is that uh, the count, how many positions, this is almost also a representative of your, your sample. For example, if you look at the chief executive officer, it means 15 positions very likely that we had 15 companies that participated in the, uh, this particular position. Chief Operations Officer or Director, uh, if you take note of this, you find that there are only three positions. Very difficult, but uh, for purpose of illustration, I just included it here. Then HR Manager, 94. IT Manager, 134. So that information is crucial to take note of. Then when reporting the data, there are a number of indicators that are used in, uh, in reporting the data. For example, your average. The challenge with the average is that they are very susceptible to outliers, which means in the data that we are analyzing, if there is an extreme value, either low or high, it tends to tilt uh, the, the average in that direction, uh, and it can be misleading. You can have an average salary, including the outlier, for example, for a CEO of uh, 10,000, then you put an outlier of 50,000 per month, you then discover that the average actually goes up. So we don't encourage you to use the average unless you've got no option. It's better to look at the other options that I will talk about. Then after that, normally data is presented in percentiles, which is your uh, percentile or lower quarter. Some people prefer to call it lower quarter. In this percentile that we are talking about here, we are just saying if you are on the 25th percentile, if this salary is on the 25th percentile uh, and your, your own company salary is on the 25th percentile, it means you are paying better than 25% of the people uh, or the organization in the in the sample that you are analyzing. Remember, this is a sample, it's not the whole population. And the samples that are used in, in salary service are normally convenient samples, so it's not a random sample. All these factors need to be taken into consideration. Then you go to your 50 percenter, which is your median. The median is much better than the average because it's not susceptible to, to, to outliers. Okay, so that's why most people talk about the median because it's rarely affected by, by outliers. So your median or the 50 percent, which means you're paying better than 50 percent of the people or, or the organizations in the norm in the sample, which is crucial. So you're better than 50 percent or you're worse than 50 percent. Uh, you can interpret it either way. Then after that, you go to the 75th percent. If you're paying at the 75th percent, it means you're paying uh, better than 75 percent of the companies in the norm sample, which means you're in the 25th uh, in the 20, uh, you're in the top 25 percent, uh, percent of the companies in terms of pay. Then others look at 90% percent, which is the upper tessa, uh, which is uh, you are paying better than 90% of the, of the companies in the sample. Very crucial information here. In terms of where you decide to benchmark your company, in terms of your own pay policy line, some people prefer to pay the 25th percent, but the danger is that you then face challenges in terms of attracting and retaining employees, especially in those uh, odd positions where you need uh, critical skills to drive the business. But also as you look at the, uh, the pay policy line, you must be very careful that you are not tying yourself in a very high cost structure. This, well, this is basic salary and basic salaries by their nature, they are fixed. So if you give someone this salary, very difficult to take away, but very easy to give. 
Yeah, so these are challenges that you need to to take into consideration. So if I was I wanted to to find information on the market, this is basic information that I would look at. But there are other issues to look at as well. When you look what is called the coefficient of variation, the coefficient of variation is looking at the variability of salaries for the particular position in the market. The higher the figure, the more variable the salaries are. And you put it another way, you are saying uh, if the variability is high, like for example for CEOs 120, which means the person who is a CEO has got a better, if they are in your organization, they have got a better chance of getting a better salary or uh, move from what they are currently earning to get a better salary in the market. But uh, if the coefficient of variation is very small, you also discover that uh, the, 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 the chances of that person getting a, a better salary in the market is very, is very limited. So in making decisions, this is a very crucial uh, indicator. So if I find that the coefficient of variation for argument's sake is 5%, uh, and we are, our data is also inc in included in the, in the analysis, chances of anyone leaving your organization getting a better salary is very slim, which means they will leave for other reasons rather than your, your salary. So this is important information uh, for you to take note of. So these are crucial uh, measures that you need to, to look at. Uh, measures of spread help you determine how varied salaries of a particular person are grade uh, And like I indicated, the, the higher the, the variability, the better chance of the person uh, earning a salary uh, also. Over and above this, uh, if you present a salary like this or your information like this, over and above this, what would be crucial to take note in a salary survey is who are the participants in terms of mixture, uh, their headcount, uh, the average revenue, it could be per month or per annum. This kind of information is very useful. And it's also crucial for organizations to participate in salary surveys, especially with reputable organizations, because that normally gives you the leeway to then request for information easily because you are also a customer and a participant. There are some companies that do not want to participate in surveys, they always pay a higher price when they, it comes to accessing information related to the market. I hope this has given you some indication in terms of uh, what to expect when you get a salary survey report. Thank you.